everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This week's hobby based card is this super cute shadow box with this nativity scene inside and it is so cute. So these shadow boxes are really fun. It's um, a, I'd say an even more simplified version of a shadow box and they will stand up perfectly but they will fold completely flat in, in this case this is a 5 by 7 and will fit nicely inside your card. Now I have a little bit of bulk on mine always turn it over um, because I've used some foam adhesive but you can still see there that's not you, you might have to pay a little bit extra um, but it will post nicely so like I said that's five by seven and then when the person gets it they will know because they're kind of straight away you pick it up like that and you kind of do that so they will know it will stand up you can also fold it that way as well and it will go into a smaller envelope that envelope size would be six by five so it's entirely up to you which way you want to do it um, but these are lovely. I'll show you the stamp set. So this is the for the lover stamps and it's the nativity. They're all a little bit blurred there because they've obviously been inked already and they've got loads of uh, my inks on them. But you can just see the detail in them there if I just bring them up. I love the donkey's face. I think he's so cute. I mean they all are. They've been a joy to colour. I've used my watercolour pencils, created this wash at the background there as well. And yeah, just really had fun with it. I think it's super cute. The actual main card itself really is quick to make. The time consuming bit for me was obviously the watercolouring of these little, you know, little images here. So let's crack on and I will show you how to make it. Okay, so to make this card, you need two pieces of five by seven. Now I have a five by seven pre-made card here and it's cream on one side and white on the other. And I want to use that. So what I'm actually gonna use and do is cut this cardstock in half to give me my two pieces of five by seven. So I'm just going to remove, and then you might have a little bit of like the score line, like the join there. So I'm just going to go in and take that piece off. It will mean I'm a little bit shy of the five of the yeah the five inch width, but it'd be my, it will be tiny. And as long as they're both the same, it doesn't matter anyway. But if I now, yeah, there we go, perfect. Okay, so I've got two pieces of five by seven, which is what you will need. This can be pattern paper, anything you want. You might not be doing a Christmas card, um, so it's entirely up to you. Then what you want to do is, with your card stock facing up, you're then going to flip it over, so you've got the back side, and you want to score at half an inch. And because mine's slightly short there on the seven, I'm just going to bring it right up to the seven, and then score at six and a half, okay? So you're going to score at half an inch and six and a half, then flip it back so it's facing up the right way and score at one inch and six inches. And you want to do that on both pieces. Okay, now by flipping over the card like we did then, it will help prevent any cracking because you're going to be doing a mountain fold and a valley fold on both sides. So the first score line here, you want to do a a mountain fold, uh, sorry, so on the first one here you want to do a valley fold, okay, so just fold it up because you've done the correct score line. Then the inside um, score line you're going to fold it down to create your mountain, okay. So if I show you now, that's what you should have. So you folded this one up to create a valley and this one down to create a mountain. Okay, you can see there it's already given us that sign and I've got no cracking at all. Okay, so I'm just doing that one on the end there as well. And when you push it in, you want it to kind of be in that shape there. So let me just do this one again. So I've got my mountain and then my valley. Again, mountain and the valley. Okay, and then what's going to happen is, is those two are going to stick together perfectly like so and there is our card base and obviously once that's stuck it doesn't matter which way then you want to kind of fold it flat but it will go fold flat and in its fold flat form it will measure six by five okay so next we need to make our little window now it doesn't matter what size or shape dies you want to use. I've got these nice fancy edged circles and I think I'm going to go for the second largest there and pop that one right in the middle because I think the biggest one, yeah, it's just going to be too big because yeah, the outer side is the cut side. Always check underneath your dies because it might be that the, the actual cut is right on the inside here 
but this one's both so it will um, sorry it's got a perforation on the inside and then it's the cut lines actually on the outside some of them do vary so that is going to go in the middle now you might want to put it slightly off to one side like so and you will have a little message maybe up here I'm going to keep mine centered and then my sentiment will kind of probably be here or still off to the left but I do want that to be in the middle so I'm just going to grab some washi tape and um, just get that stuck down now if you've got quite a sticky washi tape just pop it on a bit of your clothing just get some of the lint from your clothing on it just to take the, the initial stick off and then it won't rip your cardstock when you take it off because obviously this is going to be pushed through your cut machine okay so just popped a little bit in place there and get rid of my scoreboard okay so I'm just going to get this one cut now if you've got quite a well used mats um, sorry plates like I have I'm just grabbing some copy paper here just trim this down and just pop it over the top now I know I've burnished those um, score lines I'd probably say cut this bit first and then burnish the score lines because all it's going to do is flatten them now which is not a problem but it may weaken them a little bit so yeah do your cut your um, piece out first and then go and burnish them so now I'm just going to run that one through by putting that copy paper on top it just stops any extra markings going through because it will initially mark see any if there's any dirt and stuff like that it will go onto the copy paper and not onto your card so now I can just carefully take that off and it's not taking anything away there and take that piece off there we go keep that you may want to use that somewhere else in the card okay so see what I mean now so it's flattened those score lines a bit so I'm just going to go in and kind of redefine those again like so so now when I bring in this back I can see now I've got a really nice there we go a nice window to my card so next what you want to do is start your kind of image in the on the back piece because I like to build the inside kind of first so you can see what you're doing so what I've done is just folded in all of the sides okay so just push that inside like so I don't want to stick it together yet okay and then very roughly because I haven't got a uh, mine's got this kind of fancy edge now but just very carefully I'm just going to roughly try and hold it down there it's just so I know my kind of rough area there we go it's a really bad circle there in fact you could do it flat it's probably easier actually isn't it yeah there we go just line up your score lines and do it flat it's still okay but I just want to roughly you know that's really light that I've done it with the pencil so I can start building up my scene now I have already gone ahead and fussy cut watercolored everything my lovely little images here from that stamp set that I showed earlier and they are gorgeous I really really love these I mean look at the little Mary and the three wise men I mean it's entirely up to you how you color them but that was what I've done with them and they're just lovely and again I've used my watercolors I really do love using them and we've got the lovely angel there as well so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna have Mary and Joseph inside with obviously baby Jesus and then I'm undecided as to whether to have the three kings outside because my kind of um, memories in school and um, Sunday school is they were approaching from the hill and kind of walking I mean they obviously were all together initially um, eventually but I'm thinking about having them outside the box so or maybe up there or maybe a few of them maybe one inside so I need to kind of play around with that and I was also thinking about having the angel outside maybe as well so I need to have a play around or even these I'm not sure um, so I'm gonna kind of spend some time just deciding how I want my scene to actually be and then I'll be right back 
Okay, so I have been playing around with how I'm going to have it laid out and also with a background. So I've just created this watercolour kind of wash. Um, just trying to make it look like that this is the stable, like the, the, you know, the floor, so like the hay and stuff. And then slowly kind of going up to the midnight sky. So what I've done, none of this is stuck down yet. So that is the kind of layout I think I'm going to go for. So I think once these people are all, the people, what well they are, um, once they're all inside the card, um, the three kings will be in the distance there. So again, it's as if they're approaching the, you know, the stable. Um, and then Mary and Joseph will be around here, baby Jesus, and then obviously the angel and the animals are on the outside. Now also what I've done is I've just stamped the Star of Bethlehem and the sentiment which also came in the pack, which if I bring it in here, you can see there. So I've used, yeah, the Silent Night, Holy Night. You've also got four unto us, a child is born as well. And you've also got Christmas blessings, but I just like the Holy Night, um, Silent Night, Holy Night. And also what I've done, so I can take these ones off now, is I die cut a larger circle, still making sure it stays within that square, and then die cut the original circle that you, or shape that you would have used for this, and it will then give you this frame. And I'm just gonna stick that on the side of the, the circle there. I just found it just kind of, you know, finished it a little bit better. So that's the top, so I'll be getting all that stuck down in a minute. So I know where they're all going now. So to do the mat the inside here, so it doesn't matter about that pencil mark now, because I'm going to be cutting this down. So you want to have a mat that's going to be, let's have a little look here what we've got, because I want a little bit of a frame. So it'll be four and three quarters by four and three quarters. Okay, so I am, um, is that about right? Yeah, so I'm going to go and get this trimmed down. Okay, so I've cut it down. I've got a little bit of the base of the bottom there of the brown still showing, but I'm not too worried. I mean, it's a homemade card, so again, it just kind of shows that, you know, I have made this background myself. So what I'm going to do now is stick this with, I'm going to use my wet glue. So get your background piece stuck down, because it's best to do all this inside um, decoration before we put the, the front on. Okay, so that's the inside. I really like that. The more I look at it, and it's really made the back strong as well because that's watercolour paper. So now I'm going to start by recreating that scene again. And I'm going to pop some things on foam adhesive as well just to kind of have it a bit more lifted and, you know, just to give it more dimension again. So we had Mary and Joseph there. And then... Maybe Jesus, like so, and then I'm just going to bring this over just to check that they are in a good place. I think these ones can come in a little bit closer, maybe like so, because I've got to remember then I've got this one and this one. like so. So now I think they can come down a little bit and I think we're about there. There, I really like that. So that's where I want it so I'm going to carefully lift that off and get this stuck down. So I think I'm going to have the two of the kings are just stuck directly down as well as Joseph, I'm going to stick him straight down, and then Mary and this three king, I'm going to have on foam adhesive as along with uh, baby Jesus as well. So I'm going to get that all stuck down. So next, I'm going to attach my front piece onto that, but before I do so, I'm just going to attach that frame. I just think it'll be a bit easier to do whilst it's um, not attached. So I'm just going to pop just a thin amount of wet glue don't need much, it's just to kind of tack it in place, like so. 
and just carefully line it up. It will fit in perfectly because you've cut the same circle die. So just move it until you've got it. You shouldn't see any other colour underneath, like so. And then I'm going to use some of my tape here for the inside. So flip it over and you just want to apply down flat just on the two outer half inch sides. Okay, and I'll just carefully remove the backing. And then I'd start on one end first, so just line it up and they should perfectly sit on top of each other because they're both the same size. I'm just trying to line up that outer edge. There we go. Like so. And then again, like so. It's looking so nice. I love that already and I love that there's you know dimension inside there as well. So now I just need to finish the front. So I think I'm just going to, do I stick them directly? No, I'm going to put these on a little bit of foam as well. So I've just got these little foam dots. I'm just going to take out a couple and just cut a few in half as well. Okay, so pop camel down there, donkey over here, and I'm going to stick down my sentiment first, and that's going to be slightly hanging um, from this top piece here in the middle. Just going to hold that up, I think that's about right. And then the star, I'm not going to put on foam adhesive, I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue just towards one side because it is going to slightly overhang. Like so. And then my angel, I'm just going to pop again just a little bit of glue onto one half of her. And then she's just going to kind of sit just slightly behind the camel there. And then on the back you just want to cut another piece of plain white cardstock to four and three quarters by four and three quarters, stick it on the back and then that's where you can write your message. But there you have the card. Let me just bring my light on a bit better there. There we go. And I just think it is lovely. And then the whole thing can fold completely flat like so to pop in your envelope and then it just pops back up and stands up really nicely as well. So there you go, a really nice shadow box for any occasion, but I think this one works really well for this nativity scene. They're super cute and I know exactly who I'm giving this to. So there you go, so I hope you've enjoyed this week's hobby base card. All the supplies will be linked below and you'll be able to find everything over on my blog as well. Thanks for watching, bye.